Cooling towers are critical to HVAC and process cooling plants. But how we control the speed of those massive fans can make the difference between an efficient system or wasted energy. Because fan power scales roughly with the cube of speed, small reductions in RPM can produce outsized KW savings. This article breaks down your control options, constant speed, two-speed, dual motor arrangements, and variable frequency drives, VFDs, then compares efficiency when staging multiple towers or cells. Fan Laws Basics Before we dive into the options, let's remember the fan affinity laws. Airflow is proportional to speed, pressure goes with the square of speed, and power goes with the cube of speed. That means a small reduction in fan speed creates a huge reduction in power consumption. Constant speed. First up is constant speed. These fans are either on or off. It's the simplest and lowest cost method, but it comes with drawbacks. Coarse temperature control, higher average power, and more wear from frequent starts and stops. Capacity is controlled by cycling the fan on and off and or using basin bypass or water flow modulation. Two-speed motors. Next, the two-speed motor. These motors can operate at high speed or low speed, usually by switching windings. The options are usually set up to have a motor run at 100% or at 50% using 1800 and 900 RPM. Or the other option is at 100% and 67% with 1,800 and 1,200 RPM. This provides better energy savings than pure on-off control, but you still only get two steps, so temperature control is still rough. Dual motors. Some towers are built with two motors per fan. One of the motors is sized to run at a one-third of the main horsepower, or two-thirds of full speed. This allows for the smaller motor to run most of the year, while the larger motor runs during peak loads. They can be staged on one at a time for finer capacity control. This adds redundancy. If one fails, the other can still run, but it also means more equipment and maintenance. This is not available on all towers. Variable frequency drive, VFD. And finally, the most efficient option, the variable frequency drive. A VFD gives continuous speed control, letting you run fans at exactly the RPM needed to hold your set point. By taking full advantage of the cube law, VFDs deliver the lowest energy consumption, quieter operation, and smoother control. The upfront cost might be slightly higher, but life cycle savings almost always pay it back. One fan at full versus two at half. Here's where it gets interesting. Suppose one fan at full speed draws 50 kilowatts. If you run two fans at half speed, you still move the same air, but the power drops to just 12 and a half kilowatts. That's a 75% reduction in fan energy. And in cooling towers, distributing water over more, fill at lower air velocity often improves heat transfer. Multi-cell strategy. That's why often the best strategy in multi-cell towers is usually to run as many cells as possible at the lowest fan speed needed to meet your leaving water temperature. This not only saves energy, but also reduces noise and mechanical stress. Summary. To recap, constant speed is simple but inefficient. Two-speed motors add a low setting, but still stepwise. Dual motors provide redundancy and staging flexibility. And VFDs, while slightly more expensive, offer the best efficiency, control, and reliability. Combine VFDs with smart sequencing across multiple cells, and you'll unlock major energy savings in your plant. The best choice for cooling tower fan control really comes down to how many hours the system spends at different load levels. That depends on the type of facility, like an office building versus a data center, the local climate, and the specific temperature control strategy used for the tower. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our HVAC and plumbing estimating spreadsheets to streamline your construction bidding process. Check out our HVAC, electrical, and plumbing construction forms to help you run your business and explore our online courses for in-depth training.